Hello everyone, I am Chase at Rocky Mountain ATVMC and this is my overview and build for the Yamaha TW200. All right, so we all know that Yamaha makes some awesome smaller bikes that are out there, bikes that are great for youth riders, beginner riders, women, or even just adults that like to have smaller bikes and have them around as play bikes. But today we're doing an overview on the Yamaha TW200. These things are so much fun to ride, and this is actually my personal motorcycle. And I've always wanted one, and that's why I'm so excited about this video. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go through and just give a little background history on the bike. We'll talk about specs, we'll talk about the size of the motorcycle. We're also just gonna give you some tips and tricks on how you can get the most out of these bikes. But overall, they call these things a little bike that could because there's so many different uses for these. So we're gonna talk about some of those as well. So first, let's talk about a little background history. So the T-Dub, as I like to call it, they started making back in 1987. And as you're gonna see in this video, the biggest standout feature is the tires. They got super wide tires in the front and the rear, which makes them super fun to ride. I'll explain why here in just a little bit. But since 1987 until 2018, they're still making them. And what's awesome about these bikes is they really haven't changed much. This is a 1992, lucky to find this in really good condition. And from 1992 till now, like I said, hardly any changes. They've honestly just put a, a front rotor in the, or a rotor for the front brake rather than a drum brake. Other than that, that's about it. So what's nice is it makes parts easy to find. Parts are inexpensive. These bikes are proven reliable. They just go forever. And as far as the uses of these, you know, I see people using these for just little farm vehicles around the house. You can use them for trail riding, like dual sport adventure riding. They're great for little smaller play bikes. And for me personally, the biggest reason that I bought it was for a hunting vehicle. I didn't want to a four-wheeler or a UTV. I wanted something easy to transport or just ride up the canyon if I want to. So I chose to go with the Yamaha TW200. Now retail on these is about 4,600 bucks, but if you look hard enough like I did, you can actually find one in good shape for a really good price. All right, so now let's talk about engine specs. So this is a 196cc air-cooled dual valve four-stroke engine. And honestly, these things just go forever. That's kind of you know, the reputation they have, why they're so desirable, is these things just keep going and going and going. It's a five-speed manual transmission. Now, something I will point out is with the transmission here, geared really low. First gear, honestly, you're shifting out of it by about five miles per hour. But what's great about that is that if you're riding some trails, it just lugs. It, you know, it's almost stall proof, so you can just cruise up the trails nice and easy, and that's what makes it great for beginner riders. But once you get up into the, the taller gears, Max speed, this is kind of a question that a lot of people have is, well, how fast can it go? Is it gonna be okay if it's just a commuter bike? And honestly, here's my opinion on that. If you're buying a TW200 because you wanna just commute through town and just cruise, it's gonna be awesome. I use it for that. But if you're gonna be doing you know, longer rides on it at higher speeds, for me personally, about 50, 55 miles an hour is the fastest I can get this thing to get up to. And it's not really great keeping it at that speed. It's really revving the engine out pretty high. So a comfortable speed for me, max on this, is about 40, 45 miles an hour. So something just to consider, depending on the type of riding that you're gonna be using this for. You're gonna have a 1.8 gallon tank. What's great about these is Yamaha says you get about 78 miles per gallon. Now in my experience, it's not quite that high, but it is pretty dang close, so it does a great job. So you've got a, a keyed ignition with electric start, backup kickstarter. Now, nice thing about the keyed ignition is that depending on who you're buying this for, say you're buying it for a younger rider, if you don't want them taking it when you're not at home, you can just take the key right out. Carburetor, okay, one thing to keep in mind with these is that they're jetted pretty lean and they are cold-blooded. So it takes a while for these to warm up, so you're not gonna be able to just fire this up when it's cold and go a ride, so you're gonna have to let it warm up for a bit. Now with the suspension, you've got just over six inches of travel in the front, a little under six in the back. I've actually been pleasantly surprised with the suspension on this bike. Now I'm about 185 pounds geared up, and no, I'm not gonna be jumping this thing, but for trail riding, it actually does pretty good. Going to rocks, logs, roots, suspension actually does pretty well. Now what we wanna get into next are dimensions. You know, that's a big question that people have about these smaller bikes, you know, how tall is it, what size riders are gonna be good for, so that's what we're gonna cover next. So the seat height on this bike is 31.1 inches. Now to give you a comparison to some other bikes in Yamaha's lineup, it's a little bit taller than the TTR125E, and then it's about a half inch shorter than the TTR125LE, which is the big wheel model. And then if you compare it to the newer TTR230, it's about three inches shorter than that bike. Now, as far as what size rider would be a good fitment for it, you can use me as a reference. I'm about five foot seven. When I sit on this bike, I'm flat footed. So depending on the size of the rider, you know, just use me as a reference, that's gonna help you out. So that's the size of the bike. Now, let's talk about some tips and tricks 
and some parts and accessories that I think are gonna really help you out and get the most out of these bikes. So first and foremost, let's go back to that carburetor. So these smaller bikes, you know, especially a lot of those smaller play bikes, they are jetted pretty lean. So depending on where you're gonna be riding this or the elevation, you might need to kind of change the jetting. What's nice though is that because the jetting is so lean, you know, for us here in Utah, we ride at really high elevations. In fact, I live at 4,500 feet, but when I'm out hunting or trail riding, I can get up to 10,000 feet. So the stock jetting was actually pretty good at the elevation about 4,500 feet where I live. But when I was getting up to those really high altitudes, you know, 8,000 feet and above, it actually started to become too rich. So what I did is I went from a 114 main that comes stock and I went down to a 105. And then for the pilot, I went from a 40 down to a 35. Now those jets, okay, you're not gonna find those on the OEM diagrams, but we've actually got those on the link. So if you click on the link after this video and if you wanna jet your bike like I have for these high altitudes, then just click on the link and you can actually pick those up. But with that jetting, I've actually been able to ride this up to eight, 10,000 feet and the bike actually runs really, really good. So I've been really happy with that. So there's your carburetor. Next thing I would talk about would be foot pegs. The stock foot pegs on this bike are really small. Okay, I think they're the same size as the PW50 foot peg. So the first thing I did is just to be a little bit more comfortable, especially when I'm standing up on the bike, I swapped those out. So we've got the IMS super stock pegs on here and that has made a very big difference. Now moving up to the front of the bike, another part that I would recommend upgrading are the handlebars. So the stock bars on the T-Dub, they're just made from thin steel. You know, they're inexpensive, but they do bend pretty easily if you have a crash or even just a tip over. So what I did is I took the Tusk Universal Big Bar clamps and I use those because the 7 8 clamps are actually built into the triple clamps on this bike. So that allows me to run the Tusk Chub Bars, which are 1 and 1 8 or an oversized bar. Aluminum's lighter, also just a lot stronger. You can see we've got the Double Take Adventure mirrors along with the Ram mounts. This bike is street legal and I cruise around town, so I gotta have some mirrors on there. And then on the handlebars, I've got some Tusk grips. Now you're also gonna see Tusk Deflex Pro wraparound handguards. You know, if you're doing trail riding, light dual sport adventure riding, full wraparound handguards for me are a must. Also what's great is that's gonna protect your levers. Now the levers on this bike actually were broke when I got it, so I just put on some Tusk brake and clutch levers just to replace those, they're inexpensive. Not a bad idea just to have a couple spares if you're picking some up. So another big upgrade that I would recommend is the headlight. So the stock headlight on this bike really just isn't that bright and also it uses a lot of power, it uses 65 watts on the high beam. And we wanted to run some other electrical accessories on this bike that I'll talk about in a moment. So what we needed to do is just reduce the amount of power that we were drawing from the stator. So we went with the JNS headlight in the front. So it's an LED headlight, it's super bright, and what I love about it is that it uses a lot less power. So you're actually 35 watts with the high beam on, so literally half the amount of power as a stock headlight. And also what we did is we tusk the mini stock blinkers. We got those in the front as well as the back. Those are LED, so those are using less power as well. By running that headlight with these blinkers, we added some electrical accessories as well. So we've got the Tusk heated grips on here, and we've also got the Tusk heated seat. Now this is where we got a little bit creative, and actually I'm pretty proud of what we figured out. So you you're gonna have your switches for your heated grips and the heated seat. You don't have too many mounting options on the bike, so what we actually found is that we've got this Pro Taper handlebar pad. It's a really dense, thick foam. And so we actually took, took those switches and mounted them right into the bar pad. So I think it's pretty cool. Now from there, if we move to the back, we've got the Yamaha rack on here. So if you wanna have any sort of luggage, this just gives a good little platform to tie everything down. And then lastly, tires. Depending on the condition of your tires, if you want new tires for these, we have these, they're awesome. That's probably the biggest feature, like I mentioned earlier. You've got a 180 in the rear and a 130 in the front which honestly just makes this bike feel like it's floating. And if you are buying this for a smaller rider who's maybe just learning to ride or beginner rider, having new tires is gonna give more added grip. So it's just gonna give more confidence for the rider as well. Now you're also gonna see up at the front, I've got the Polysport fork boots. The ones on here were blue. They weren't cracked, they weren't in terrible shape. I just wanted to update the look a little bit, so I put the black ones on here. But there it is. That is my Yamaha TW200 overview as well as build. Hopefully this has given you guys some great ideas and tips on how to get the most out of this bike. Now I know there's a lot of you out there that have these bikes and I know there's that cult following, people that love these. And if you're interested in picking one up, like I said, you're gonna love it. Just know what to expect when you do pick one up and leave your comments below. Let us know what you guys think about yours. Maybe you have some tips and tricks that I didn't mention or some upgrades that you didn't see on my bike. That's really gonna help other riders out there looking to get the most out of theirs. And if you guys have any questions about anything I've done, feel free to leave your comments below. We'll get those answered for you. And to pick up any of the parts that we talked about today, you can click on the link or head over to RockyMountAtvMC.com. 
Just enter the make, the model, and the year of your T-Dub, and as you scroll down, you can see all the parts specific to this bike. Remember guys, subscribe if you like this video and you wanna see more like it, because we've got a lot of other great overviews on smaller bikes that are really popular for play bikes, trail bikes, you name it. So subscribe, that's gonna keep you up to date. I'm Chase the Rocky Mountain, we'll see you on the trails.